the U.S. Constitution will be supplanted by the U.N. Charter and consigned to the ash heap of history, a useless relic of the past. All other U.N. conventions will take effect. Appointed officials for state and local regions will be forced to comply with these international rules when representing their sectors. There is a fundamental dichotomy between the United States system and the United Nations system and almost every other system. And that fundamental dichotomy comes from the, the thunderous assertion in the Declaration of Independence. Men are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. We get our rights from God. And then they went on to say, to secure these rights, governments are instituted. So the United Nations comes along. The United Nations, no God. There's never been God at the United Nations. So where do rights come from? The international covenants on civil and political rights. And they go over and they list one after another after another. The right of peaceful assembly shall be recognized. No restrictions may be placed on the exercise of this right other than those imposed in conformity with the law. In other words, we pass a law, you don't have the right. The American system says rights come from God, says government should be limited, and then the Bill of Rights comes along and says Congress shall make no law respecting those fundamental rights. The difference between the U.S. system and the United Nations system couldn't be more obvious. Many years ago, when I was in high school and college, like millions of other Americans, I was an avid supporter of the United Nations. I believed all the many things that I had learned in grade school and in high school, that after World War II, the founders of the United Nations had come together to form this beneficent organization to create world harmony, brotherhood, peace, and understanding, and who could be opposed to that. It wasn't until later in my college years that I began reading the actual United Nations documents and books which were critical of the United Nations. I began to see the real problem, and it became very apparent to me that we were headed under the United Nations toward a convergence of countries into a global tyranny. Thus the title for my book, Global Tyranny, Step by Step. We were under the United Nations and under the rubric of world brotherhood and understanding, marching into an intended tyranny, and it is happen happening piecemeal, gradually, step by step. Tyranny is something which is fastened upon a people incrementally because most people have sufficient sense that they can recognize a tyrannical proposal when it's made explicitly before them. The American perspective, as articulated by James Madison, is that you discern abuses in principle and you prevent the abuses by denying the principle. Following the pattern already established in China, only approved churches adhering strictly to government dictates regarding religion will be tolerated. All churches desiring to remain independent of government compliance will be disbanded. Their houses of worship converted to other uses or simply burned to the ground and their pastors incarcerated. Churches submitting to government regulation will be forced to modify their beliefs to conform with the anti-Christian attitude of the almighty state. No exceptions will be allowed. The United Nations hostility to biblical concepts of faith has to do once again with the idea that biblical religions, and in this I would include as well the Islamic religion, while it is not biblical, it has similar perspectives on social responsibilities. All these monotheistic faiths posit something to which the state is accountable, something to which the state ultimately will have to give a reckoning for its abuse of authority. To the extent that there is any doctrine which posits a loyalty higher, to that, higher than that which people have to the state, the state is going to be hostile. And something which proposes to create a global government, as the United Nations unambiguously does, is going to have pitched hostility towards any doctrine which challenges its sovereignty over any aspect of human life. The one world religion will decide what ethical values they wish to see uh, brought into each country, into each religion. And there will be no choice, because the whole thing is control. The entire basis of the one world religion is humanism. And humanism, when you take it back to its roots, is strictly atheism, paganism, and eventually, if you trace it back even further, you are actually right into the occult.
if uh, United Nations has, have, has their way, there will be curtailment of our right to practice religion. They are not going to be believers in, uh, in, in the right to uh, practice our religions as we have seen fit throughout this country. And uh, therefore, those individuals who are interested in this subject certainly cannot be complacent about what the United Nations is doing. It is certain that these new UN rules governing the American people won't come without resistance. But by then, resistance will be futile. Citizens who attempt to defend whatever freedoms they have remaining will join the victims of the inevitable brutality and bloodbath carried out by a tyrannical UN dictatorship. For those still wondering if the United Nations would actually resort to such atrocities, consider for a moment the UN's lesser known side. The United Nations organization was originally created by a small but powerful group of subversives as a future seat of a one-world government, camouflaged as the world's last hope for peace. And concealed by a barrage of self-generated propaganda, the UN has been responsible for some of the most controversial and violent acts of aggression in history. Since its founding in 1945, the UN has made gradual and significant progress toward the ultimate goal of its founders, world domination. Today, enormous in size and influence, the UN has a countless number of programs, agendas, and conventions ready to supersede the laws and practices of all nations, most certainly including the United States. Fortunately, more and more Americans are beginning to see the wisdom of what the John Birch Society has been saying for well over three and a half decades. Get us out of the U.N. March 20th, 1997, Capitol Hill. Texas U.S. Representative Ron Paul introduces one of the most crucial bills regarding the future of freedom, the American Sovereignty Restoration Act. Its purpose to provide for complete withdrawal of the United States from the United Nations. Well, I don't think we need the United Nations to be able to talk to other nations. The United Nations was established in 1945. We talked to a lot of nations before that. We have our embassies. We have our ambassadors. We can pick up a telephone these days and talk to whoever we want around the world. So I do not think that is a legitimate excuse. That is just a, an excuse to do the bad things that the United Nations does. Every year since we belong to the United Nations, we have lost a little bit of our sovereignty. And we're moving in that direction where eventually we will not have the United States of America and we'll be nothing more than a pawn of the United Nations. It didn't take long for a word to get out. Soon, Dr. Paul's office received messages from other representatives willing to co-sponsor the bill and an avalanche of congratulatory letters from the American people thanking him for introducing this crucial bill covered his desk. June 4th, 1997, 54 representatives vote in favor of the Get Us Out measure. A few years ago, it was unlikely if four representatives would have supported it. Even though the measure didn't pass, the numbers are a solid indicator of the accelerated support for the United States' immediate withdrawal from the U.N., and with the help of more and more Americans, Congress will again be forced to vote whether or not to get us out of the United Nations for good. The Congress it tends to be political at times. They, they, tend, they tend to respond to what they hear. Now, if they think there's enough people in their district that want them to vote a certain way, they all of a sudden will become interested. The American people are starting to wake up. I think we're making a lot of progress, and I predict we're going to get a lot more votes next time. Many Americans are working to influence Congress on important issues, several of which have been discussed in this program. Clearly, the Get Us Out issue stands above them all. For if we allow the UN to become an all-powerful government, victories in Congress will become meaningless, and the causes of single-issue activists will be permanently lost. But with your help, we can rescue our nation from the United Nations and preserve liberty for generations to come.
Effective action is informed, organized action. For more information on the UN threat and what you can do to help get us out, call 1-800-JBS-USA-1 today. Ask for the UN packet.